Hello dear students, I uh, hope you are doing fine, you are keeping yourself safe. So uh, in today's video, I was supposed to teach isomerism and types of isomerism. But according to the new syllabus, the isomerism is not there in this chapter, that is coordination compound chapter. So we'll start with valence bond theory, okay? We'll start with valence bond theory. So in this topic, we have to study the types of hybridization, geometry, magnetic property used by a coordination compound. So before we go to the example, these are the coordination number used by the coordination compound. That is coordination number 4, 5, and 6. Now the compounds with coordination number 4, there are two types of hybridization possible. That is sp3 and dsp2. Now, sp3, when the ligand is weak field ligand. So I have given here some of the commonly used ligands, okay? So weak field ligands are like Cl negative, Br negative, F negative, H2O, whereas strong field ligands, NS3, CO, Cn. In fact, there are more ligands, but I'm just uh, trying to show you the commonly used ligands. Now, so let us take the example of this compound, uh, COF4 negative. Now, you can see the coordination number of this compound is 4. Now, again with 4, there are two types of hybridization possible, that is sp3 or dsp2. Now, you can see the ligand here is weak fill ligand. So if it is weak fill ligand, we'll use sp3. And if it is strong fill ligand, we'll use dsp2. Same goes for coordination number 6. With coordination number 6, there are two types of hybridization possible. If it is weak fill ligand, we'll use sp3d2. And if it is strong fill ligand, we'll use d2sp3. Now, if the hybridization used is sp3, the geometry will be tetrahedral. If it uses dsp2, geometry will be square planar. If the coordination number is 5, hybridization will be dsp3, trigonal bipyramidal. If the coordination number is 6, we have d2sp3 and sp3d2. For both, we'll get the same geometry, that is octahedral. So before, uh, before you start with this topic, make sure that you know this table, you know the types of ligand, like strong fill ligand and weak fill ligand, and it's very important you know the electronic configuration of the first transition series, that is from scandium to zinc, scandium, titanium, vanadium, chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, and zinc. It's very important you know the electronic configuration. So let us take an example and discuss valence bond theory. So the first example I'm going to take is NiCl4, all two negative. Now you have learned how to calculate coordination number. So if you calculate the coordination number of this compound, you'll find the coordination number of this compound is four. Okay, because there are four donor atoms. So, how to approach valence bond theory? First of all, you find out the metal ion present in the coordination compound. Now, you can see here, the metal ion present in this compound is nickel. So, you write down the electronic configuration of nickel in the ground state. So, nickel atomic number is 28. So electronic configuration is argon, 3d8, 4s2, 4p0. Now, why I'm writing 4p0? Because with coordination number 4, there are two types of hybridization possible. That is sp3 and dsp2. And if you see, in both the hybridization, you need P subsub, that is P orbital. That's why 
we have to write the p of by 2 also, that is 4p0. After writing the electronic configuration, you calculate the oxidation state of the metal ion. So you know how to calculate the oxidation state? Let the oxidation state of nickel be x plus charge of chloro is 1 negative multiplied by 4 because you have 4 chloro is equal to minus 2. So x will be equal to plus 2. So nickel uses oxidation number to positive. Now nickel has 28 electrons. So nickel to positive will have 26 electrons. That is 28 minus 2 because the oxidation state is plus 2. Now the electronic configuration will be argon. So we'll first remove the electron from 4s because there is no electron in 4p. So first we'll remove from 4s. Since we need to remove only two electrons, we'll remove two electrons from 4s. So it becomes 4s0. Now in case, if you need to remove more electrons, you go to 3d. So only two electrons, so 4s0, 3d8, and 4p0. So this is the electronic configuration of Ni2 positive. After that, you draw the orbitals for 3d, 4s, and 4p to find out the hybridization. So 3d, you have five orbitals. 4s, you have one orbital. And 4p, you have three orbitals. In 3d, you have eight electrons. In 4s, there is no electron. 4p also, you don't have any electron. Now, the next thing, we try to find out the hybridization. Now, you know the coordination number is 4. Cl is weak field ligand. So the hybridization will be sp3. So let us see whether it's uh, possible or not to have sp3 hybridization. Now, you have to be very careful. You have to, be, you have to check the nature of the ligand, OK? That is weak fill or strong fill. So it's weak fill, sp3. So you need 1s and 3p orbital. Now, always remember, in coordination compound, the bond is coordination bond, where ligand will transfer or will donate a pair of electron. Okay, each ligand will transfer a pair of electron to the central metal ion. So, to form a coordinate bond, you need vacant orbital. You need vacant orbital. So you can see S is vacant, P is also vacant, so we'll use 1S and 3P. So these four orbitals, that is atomic orbital, will undergo mixing to form four molecular or hybridized orbital. So these four atomic orbital will form four hybridized orbital. So next step. Three D will remain as it is, and we'll have four hybridized orbital. That is sp three. Now these vacant orbitals are occupied by the electrons from the ligand. That means each ligand, that means each chloro, will donate a pair of electron to the hybridized orbital. So you can see this is how we find the hybridization in a coordination compound. Now, so when you have to write hybridization, what is the hybridization of this compound? It is sp3. You write down sp3. Geometry, what will be the geometry of this compound? You check the table. If the hybridization is sp3, geometry will be tetrahedral. So you'll write here tetrahedral. Next, you need to find out the magnetic property. 
Now, magnetic property, it can be either paramagnetic or diamagnetic. Now, you check the orbitals. If there is at least one unpaired electron, if there is at least one unpaired electron, the compound is paramagnetic in nature. If all the orbitals are paired, then the compound is diamagnetic in nature. Now you check here, this is paired, this is paired, this is also paired, you see here is unpaired. So therefore, this compound is paramagnetic in nature. Next, you have to find magnetic moment. So for magnetic moment, you have a formula. Magnetic moment. So the magnetic moment formula is square root n into n plus 2, where n is number of unpaired electron. So you check the orbitals, you find out the number of unpaired electrons. So you can see from here, you can see there are two unpaired electrons. 1, 2. So n will be equal to 2. So the magnetic moment mu is equal to root over 2 multiplied by 2 plus 2, that is root over 8. And the unit of magnetic moment is Vm. So this is how we apply valence bond theory to a given compound. Now uh, let us take one more example uh, with coordination number 4 where the compound will use DSP2 hybridization. Ni, Cn, all four, charge is too negative. Now, this compound, again you have the same metal, that is nickel. So again you write the electronic configuration of nickel, atomic number 28. Electronic configuration is argon, 3D8, 4S2, 4P. Zero. Next, you find out the oxidation state. So x plus minus one multiplied by four equal to minus two, which implies x equal to plus two. So Ni two positive will have twenty six electrons. So the electronic configuration will be argon three d eight four is zero four p zero. Next, you draw the orbitals. Three d has got five orbitals. One two three four five. So 3D, 4S, you have one orbital, 4P, you have three orbitals. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Next, coordination number 4, but this is strong field ligand. So the hybridization will be DSP2. That means you have one D orbital, one S orbital, and two p orbital. So you'll have to take one orbital from d subcell, one from s subcell, and two from p subcell. Now you can see here, you don't have empty orbitals in d subcell. So what you'll do, since a strong field ligand will force this electron to get paired, because we know in an orbital we can accommodate two electrons. So since a strong field ligand will force this electron to get paired here. And this orbital will be empty and we'll use it for hybridization. So next step, in 3D you'll have this configuration, 4S and 4P. Now we'll use 1D, 1S, and 2P. Now since we are going to take this D orbital from 3D subcell, there will be four orbitals left. So 3D, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And the hybridization, you will get four hybridized orbital, DSP2, and this four empty hybridized DSP2 orbital will be occupied by CN. That means each CN 
will donate a pair of ligand to form four coordinate bond with the metal ion. And there will be one unhybridized 4K orbital. So again, if you ask, what is the hybridization? The hybridization of this compound is DSP2. What is the geometry? Now, if the hybridization is DSP2, from the table, you can check the geometry is square planar. Next, what will be the magnetic property? You can see, is there any unpaired electron here? No. So the magnetic property will be diamagnetic. Next, magnetic moment. You can see there is no unpaired electron. So n will be equal to 0. Magnetic moment will be root over 0 into 0 plus 2. That is equal to 0. Bm. So this is how we find out the geometry, the hybridization, the magnetic property of a compound that is coordination compound with coordination number 4. Now you can take some more compounds from the textbook having coordination number 4 and practice yourself, okay? And you can also practice the question which comes from this topic, okay? So in the next video, we'll study the types of hybridization, geometry, magnetic property for a compound with coordination number 6. Thank you.